I am so happy to be here on Voice of the Vatican with Father Hugh Clifford, Director of Formation at the Irish College here in Rome, Italy. And Father, welcome to Voice of the Vatican. Thank you for being with us. Thank you very much, Ashley, and welcome to yourself to the Irish College here in Rome. And it's great to have you on Shalom World TV here. Father, thank you. Father, would you tell us about the history of the Pontifical Irish College and, and how it ended up right here in the middle of Rome, Italy? This is the Irish College in Rome, the Pontifical Irish College. It's, uh, it dates back to 1628, not the current building, but in the 17th century after the Reformation, there was religious persecution in Ireland and it was impossible to organize seminaries or to train priests properly in the country itself. And so a solution was found by the bishops and the priests in Ireland in setting up a network of continental colleges, colleges in significant European cities where they could train priests and smuggle them back into Ireland to minister to the people. So an obvious place to start one was in Rome. Here in Rome in the 1620s, there was a famous Irish theologian, a Franciscan named Father Luke Wadding. He's quite associated with San Pietro in Montorio and also St. Isidore's College, which was run for many centuries by the Irish Franciscans. And Father Wadding is also linked with reflection on the doctrine of the Immaculate Conception. He was anxious to help uh, to get a seminary founded in Rome and he was thinking about how he might do it. And there was also a cardinal here, Cardinal Ludovico Ludovisi, who was the nephew of the Pope at the time. And the Pope had made him Cardinal Protector of Ireland. And sometimes those kind of titles at that time, because of the distance and travel, a title might be a, a bit empty. But Cardinal Ludovico Ludovisi was keen that his, he would actually do something for Ireland. So he and Father Luke Wadding got together and they founded an Irish college here in Rome. And the first site was on Franciscan uh, property over near St. Isidore's and Father Luke Wadding arranged the teachers and the, the premises. The college moved for various reasons at different times. Before coming here, it was for 90 years um, over near the Roman Forum at the Church of St. Agatha dei Goti, near the Angelicum University. And, and the Bank of Italy was next door. The bank was anxious to expand, so they offered the Irish uh, to, to buy them out so that they could move. And the rector at the time, Father Hagen, organized a collection in Ireland and put the monies together and put huge effort and work into building the college, a new purpose-built on the site. So he was able to buy the site and build the college. And you can actually see a vid video on our website of the college being built and the bishops coming to inspect the building of the college at the time. So formation for the priesthood has always been the, the main mission of the college. Um, it does other things too nowadays, as well as formations for the priesthood, um, formation of postgraduate priests from all over the world that they come here. And it's a, a little continuation of the Irish mission in ways when we don't have as many missionaries these days that those who come here to receive ongoing formation, uh, learning, doing uh, licenses and doctorates and theological subjects are able to go back and teach in their own countries. So. Um, but as I say, formation for the priesthood is the, the core of the work that goes on here. And now we have 14 seminarians from Ireland. Father, would you tell us about the formation that happens right here inside of the Pontifical Irish College? The formation is the primary activity of the college, the formation of the uh, priests. And we have 14 seminarians for Irish dioceses here at the moment. So the, these days, formation has developed, obviously, over the, the, the years, and we follow the, the guidelines that were uh, set down by Pope, John, Pope St. John Paul II in his, um, his apostolic exhortation, Pastoris Dabo Vobis, that came after a synod of bishops on the subject of formation from 1992. And in that document, he, um, for convenience uh, of being able to distinguish the, the, the areas of formation, talked about the human, the spiritual, the pastoral, and the intellectual. So we um, organize and provide formation under those four umbrellas. Now, of course, there's a lot of overlap between them. But in the human area, we look at the person themselves to help a person develop because John Paul talked about the humanity of the priest being a bridge to Christ, that uh, the humanity of the priest should lead a person to be able to encounter Christ. And of course, we all have our faults and failings. So it's a matter of developing, being able to be the best person, developing the candidate for the priesthood's potential to the to the best possible. So that can involve 
the psychology area, the human development in a whole lot of different ways, even the, the culture of Rome. And Pope Francis often talks about community formation. And that's a part of it, living together in seminary is important because living up close to each other, we get to, to know each other quite quite well, each other's strengths, each other's weaknesses, and help each other to develop as human beings. So then there's the pastoral, and that's reaching out to people. So all the formation has a pastoral aim, as John Paul said, being able to take the gospel to people, to meet them like Christ, to, um, to, to take the gospel and evangelize evangelize people and be able to, to listen to them and be with them to be the have the presence of the church reaching out to them then the spiritual um we have nothing to give if we're not in communion with with christ himself um in prayer to god so we have a spiritual director on the staff father tom norris and he helps the, the students in their, their prayer lives and he meets them one-to-one -one, then the spiritual direction relationship. It's not quite the same as confession, but yet there's a confidential nature to it where a person is able to open their souls and let the spiritual director be like a friend to, the, to their soul. Anamkara is the word in the Irish tradition, um, helping them to, to, lead, to discern where the spirit is, is leading them and the Jesuit tradition that difference between consolation and, and desolation. And then the intellectual, our students go to various universities in Rome where they do degree courses in philosophy and theology. And that's as St. Peter's letter talked about, giving the reasons for the hope that is in us so that they would be able to, um, to talk to the people of our times, to answer their questions, to grapple with their questions. And so many people are educated to such a high standard now that they need to be able to, to know that the faith is reasonable. It's not just some fairy tale or, or something not to be taken seriously, that faith and reason um, support each other and are, are like the, these two wings. So these four areas are very important to us and there's lots of overlap between them. And um, the city of Rome is an ideal place to, to engage in all, all this, in the pastoral area, what I was talking about, our seminarians do various outreaches. They give catechetical preparation for First Communion and Confirmation to children through the English language on Sunday mornings here. And then the, our other seminarians go out on the streets with the Santa Gidio community, one of the new movements in the church, looking after the poor on the streets of Rome. And they, they visit the poor people, not just to give them food, they do that, yes, but to um, reach out the hand of friendship to them as well and, and get to know them. And some very deep relationships are built th there. And it's genuinely seeing the face of Christ in the poor and the poor being able to see the face of Christ and the seminarians who visit them. What is your role, Father, as the Director of Formation? My role is as Director of Formation. So in that role, I'm in cooperation with three other priests who are on the staff of the college. There's the Rector, the Vice Rector, the Spiritual Director, and then my role is as a direct contact with the seminarians, being with them in their day-to-day -day lives. So both accompanying them and helping them to be the best priests that they can be, and also discerning in a few different directions, discerning with the seminarian as to his readiness to continue forward for priesthood, um, whether he will be ordained or not, and discerning kind of on, on the part of the church as well, that the, the church does have to decide, is this person suitable for the priesthood is, is this is call. Everybody has a, a call in life. So um, if a person comes here, it's a very brave and good choice to, to discern a vocation to the priesthood. But not everybody is necessarily called to that. And sometimes people who go through seminary but don't stay can make wonderful um, married people and all the other roles in the church. So then my role would involve a good bit of organization, organizing the, the lives of the seminarians, figuring out timetables, um, arranging the speakers who come in to help us with the, the various areas uh, of formation. And I suppose plugging the seminarians into what's going on around us here here in Rome, um, helping them and advising them on, on what, what they're doing um, in all facets of, of their formation journey and giving inputs to them as well on the different areas of, of priestly life, some of the liturgical and practical and pastoral um, training that they, they need for parish life and other ministries when they're ordained. Why is it important for these seminarians to be formed here in Rome in the heart of the church? The lads are very appreciative of having this opportunity to study in Rome. 
I suppose not everybody would might like being able to, to study abroad for various reasons. Um, but uh, these lads have been chosen by their bishops to come and avail of this. And I think they really appreciate the, the international nature of it, this coming together, this crossing point of the church in, in the world where so many nations are coming together here. And you can really feel the universality of the church here and being near to the successor of St. Peter. And I think the, the sense of history, there's history on every street corner in Rome and meeting so many devotions to the saints and being walking the, the trails of the martyrs, the, the station churches of Lent. Um, that there's just such a, a variety and a, a positive a positivity of outlook here in Rome that I think that the lads really appreciate it and they find it surreal walking past the Colosseum to get to their university classes every day. Um, I think that we are encouraged as well. The Irish Church has had, I suppose, some difficult years as well. So meeting others from other countries, it gives great perspective as well. We obviously come across some painful situations, those who have come from countries where martyrdom is a, a current reality. And that puts a lot of perspective on things. And we meet people from countries where there are, where there are positive stories about vocations and numbers going forward for priesthood. And we come across people from countries where there are struggles. So it puts everything into a certain context, a universal context that helps us to think universally and be truly Catholic in that way.